Good day and welcome to A Place Call Through, where I'm your host, Evangelist Patricia Wade Going, and we broadcast from WITV7 Community Broadcast Network. You know, in case you may be wondering, what is this A Place Call Through about? Well, it's just that, going through, getting through, and how you have come through. It is an inspirational moment where people share their real stories and their real testimonies to help encourage each other. And we do so globally to help one another go through life hurdles, the challenges that we're often faced by. So, you know, in order for us to continue doing this, we do it by your charitable donations. So we ask that you continue to sow those seeds. If you haven't already sown, please do so today. Help us make that change. Help us to impact those lives that are listening and tuning in just like you are. Today, we are so honored to have with our guest, Ms. Barbara Allen, who's going to share her story of going through, of abuse, and the one hardest thing was the addiction, an addiction to cocaine. So we want her to be encouraged as well as she's encouraging you today. And so let's give her a wholeheartedly welcome to A Place Called Through. Welcome, Ms. Allen, today to this place called through. Thank you for having me, Tisha. You're so welcome. We want to go ahead and jump right on into your story um, because, you know, you shared with us previously that there was an addiction. And, you know, people look at it like, ill, uh, and yeah, in so many facets, it is all of that. But to understand what is an addiction, and when, you know, when we looked at it, it it's defined as having not control over doing things and taking things and and using things to a point that they do harm to oneself. So would that define where you were with your addiction to cocaine? Yes, I would say that's exactly what it is. Um, addiction takes you out of that comfort zone. Um, for me, my addiction was crack cocaine. And, you know, you would do anything to get it, to have it, to use it. That might mean neglecting your house, neglecting your children, not paying the bill to get high. You'll do anything to get it. And so that would cover also the different levels of addiction, which are also emotional, physical, mental. And the one thing that I found really alarming was spiritual, because you're yeah. kind of like in a capsule. And, you know, because it does kind of take over and it affects your brain. Actually, it affects your total being. Because alarmingly, there's so many large cases of people going to the hospital because of these addictions. And, you know, the one thing I want to share up front is before we get too far in it, if you are addicted to crack cocaine, any substance that is causing any harm to you, your family, or even a friend, please have them to reach out at 1-800-487-4889. And that's the substance abuse and Mental Health Services Administration open 24 hours to give you that help that you need. Also look for your local you know, clinics and your doctors and departments of social services. They are there with the help that you need. So you know, we wanna jump right on in because we only have a few minutes here. So Ms. Allen, talk to us what was going on that led you to get addicted to crack cocaine? So um, when I think about my addiction, I think about um, I was going through so many things in my life, dealing with, you know, childhood trauma, of being molested, dealing with being in a marriage, my first marriage of domestic violence, where, um, I was constantly told I was nothing. I was nobody. I was going to never be nothing. Nobody loved me and just getting beat up. I, um, had a miscarriage due to getting beat up by my husband and so when I got into drugs, I got into that place where I didn't want to hurt anymore. I didn't want to feel anymore. I just needed something to numb my mind, to numb my body for a little while. And so, you know, because of the fact that you were actually abused at a very early age, so that had to be really horrific for you. And then here now, you know, as you're getting older, you're, you know, having feelings and emotions, of course, because of the fact that you know, you were molested. And of course, you kept that solid for so, so many years, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that had to be very horrific for you as well. So you started developing, you know, relationships, outside relationships with other people, you know, that kind of said to me, okay, I, I can't do this. I, I shouldn't, 
you know, be getting beaten and, you know, you fell in love with somebody that you didn't think that was going to do any harm to you. So mm-hmm. because of the fact that, okay, you've already gone through, you know, this molestation period. And so now here it comes. I'm getting married, you know, all hopes and all dreams now. So what was that shift for you like? Because you're building now from leaving at one area, going into another. So what was that like for you? It was very traumatic for me when I think about it, because again, um, I think about the family secrets, you know, like when I was being molested and when I told my mom, who was that person that I thought was going to be my protector, she was telling me, no, you don't talk about that. That didn't happen. You know, what happens in here stays in here. And so when I got into my marriage, um, again, family secrets, you don't go around and tell everybody you get beat up, you know, you got to smile and act like you happy. And so again, it was like them family secrets again. And it just went from one end all the way to another end. And it was just devastating. And so I had to find a way out of that. I didn't want to feel it anymore. I, I was just tired of it, you know? And so when, okay, the time came and you said, okay, well, I'm going to get married. Did you have any children prior to this or did you have children after you got married? I had my first child at 17 by my husband. We got married. I was um, 18. We had the second child by 20. So um, when I got pregnant, you know, after I had the baby, we got married. Um, And that was due to I couldn't be home with the child. So I had to go and move in with my fiance, soon to be husband. And um, that's when life changed. You know, I was and there with him. He was, you know, pro- he was my provider. You know, he tried to keep me um, dependent on him. You know, I was very um, independent. I wanted to work. I couldn't work. I had to stay home. So he started putting all of these, you know, stipulations on me. And, and then it begun. And then, too, you know, like you just said, so you began to believe that, you know, I can't do anything because you were so Mm -hmm. dependent on the person who you fell in love with and who now you're the father of your children. Mm -hmm. And he has convinced you otherwise that, no, you're not going anywhere. We're going to be here together and I'm going to do better. And it's Mm going to be the ABCs of loving each other. But then you found out, you know, unfortunately later that, oh, no, this was not this was not really reality. This wasn't happening. And so you were hurting because of things that happened to you earlier. And now here you are, you know, you're thinking, okay, well, I'm so matured. I'm this, you know, and Mm -hmm. life has to get better for me only Mm -hmm. to take this dive now that, okay, you're a mother and now you're a wife and here you are, you're being beaten as we stated earlier, Mm -hmm. you know, mentally and physically as well as spiritually to believe that, okay, we are not going nowhere. This is it. This is Mm -hmm. as far as we can go with this. And I think that, you know, that leads us into the addiction of the crack cocaine because you were seeking something greater um, to relieve some of Mm -hmm. this this negativity. So real quickly, before we take a commercial break, uh, for our listeners and our viewers, we want to talk about how, you know, escaping this, what were you feeling about get, getting out of that situation. And we've got about a minute and a half to talk about that. Well, to, to get out of the drugs, um, yeah. I really didn't know how I was going to get out of it. You know, I knew that um, it was controlling me. It was consuming me. I wasn't being the best mother that I could be. And um, deep down inside, I would pray and I would be like, God, if you even exist, can you help me? God, if you are real, can you deliver me? God, I don't want to be like this. I hear people talking about you, but I don't never see you doing nothing for me. You know, from a kid, you allowed me to be molested. This was my thinking at that time. You know, you allowed me to be hurt over and over and over again. And so if you exist, can you help me? And then, and again, like we said, it affects you both emotionally and spiritually. Mm-hmm. So therefore, you know, you have a new mind, a new thought of thinking. But we want you to hold those thoughts right there because it's almost time for us to take a quick commercial break. And then we're going to come back and talk to you, you know, about your survivalship and how you had to deal with your children, you know, while you were going through this type of, you know, emotional turmoil and the addictions and, you know, the abuse and all the other things that were happening with you. 
So we have to stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this commercial break at a place called Truth. Happy is an intentional and lifelong journey, but it's hard to change and grow towards higher levels of happy without knowing where you're starting from. Our happy quiz puts a starting pin on the map to your happy living and provides additional guidance and motivation along the way. Just go to happyliving.com and take the happy quiz to get started on your road to happy. Welcome back to A Place Call Through, where I am your host, Evangelist Patricia Wade Goings. And today we're sharing our story with you from a Miss Barbara Allen, who has been in an abusive relationship. She's come through so many hurdles of that abuse emotionally, physically, and now finding out spiritually that she is going through yet another situation where, you know, she got married to someone who she put her heart into. She has children, and here it still is abusive, but now in a different form where the addiction to crack cocaine has now kicked in only for her to find out, I want out of this. This is not what I'm meant to be. So, Miss Allen, as we were talking previously, you know, about going through and with you having two daughters, and now your daughters are having to witness a lot of things that you did not desire for them to witness, but you got a point in your life, as we mentioned about the addiction, you know, crack cocaine does affect your mind. And so you had to go through that revelation to understand that there is something more. And you were just one of, you know, thousands that pleaded out for something and you wanted something greater and something better for your life and for your children. And so you were at a point now where you like, as you just stated before commercial break, you were crying out to God. So during your addictive time, what kind of relationship did you have? What kind of, what was your spirituality like? Well, um, thank you for asking me. When I think about my spirituality then, I um, didn't, once I was getting high in my addiction, really in my addiction, I really wasn't going to church. Because again, I felt like, you know, God didn't love me, you know, um, and the enemy will tell you to hide in shame instead of crying out and, you know, really just saying, hey, you know, I need you. And, you know, then on the flip side, there was plenty of times where I'm not even going to lie. I would go into the church house high as a kite, you know, but I wanted to be delivered. I wanted to be healed and you know, I would, you know, just pray over and over and over again. And the funny thing is, it's like, I'll pray this magnificent prayer. God, please help me. Please deliver me. You know, I'm not going to never do it again. You know, um, I, I just want a better life for my family. And boom, somebody knock on my door. I'll start getting high all over again. But I think now when I think about it, it wasn't that, you know, God's timing is always the right timing. And so Absolutely. I think about how he delivered me. He delivered me sitting at my kitchen table with a kilo about to get high. Probably would have died that day. But that day I heard the audible voice of God tell me that if I put the pipe down, I'll never use it again. Um, the first time I thought I was hallucinating because I'm in the house by myself and um, looking around like this, you know, must be crazy. And again, I attempted to put the pipe pack pipe to my mouth to try to smoke again and I heard the audible voice of God again this time a little stronger firmer with love said if you put that pipe down you will never use it again and I put that pipe down and I'm 33 years clean because of it amen thank God for that and that's where you had reached in that point where emotionally you found forgiveness from mm -hmm. all the abuse and the addiction you know that you had been obviously introduced to by someone else that introduced mm -hmm. you to that. So, you know, you were reaching for higher heights. And like you said before in our, you know, when we talked earlier, what was making the difference was your belief system. Now, what you believe that you could be free and you want it to be free. So mm -hmm. we want you to share real quickly for our listeners and our viewers as the clock is winding down. What advice would you give to someone who is actually stuck in this rut and not maybe so as much as you were wanting to give up, maybe not knowing. What would be your words of encouragement to them? The first thing I would tell anybody is that recovery is real. 
recovery is tangible and anybody can get it. Um, it don't matter what road you take. There are rehabs, there are hospitals, there's crisis stabilization unit, there's inpatient. You know, there's plenty of roads to get you to that path that um, it is achievable and you can do it. I'm a living witness. Um, another thought that I would be saying this, I thought I would be dead and gone, but um, I called out, I reached out in the middle of my addiction and I got help, I got clean, I got sober. And so, you know, and that's what, in other words, what you're saying to them to, you know, that they have to reach out. You have to want this help. You have to want to give it up. Mm -hmm. You have to want to change. And so we want to give it to them again from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration. That number is 1-800-487-4889. And there's also another number that I have, 1-800-662-4345. Call 24 hours a day to get the help that can help you get through this life altering situation. This is serious, it does affect your brain, it affects your total functioning. You know, you lose control of who you are. But, you know, Ms. Allen was truly blessed and he is blessed, 33 years. You know, she's been away from this and now she helps mentor and teaches you. Those listeners and viewers out there that want to help how to be free and to get rid of this addiction. So I'm going to ask you, if you will, also in our closing, to let them know that, you know, as you said in your book, releasing that stronghold. Tell them how they can reach out to you about your book. And if they want to get help, you're there for them. So in about another minute and a half, if you will, share that information for us. Sure. Um, the name of my book is Releasing the Strongholds. It's available on Amazon. You can go to Amazon.com books. Just type in Releasing the Stronghold or you can type in my name, Barbara Allen. One of the things, um, you could also send me an email um, at restorationandhopeforyou at gmail.com. That's restorationandhope, the number four, the letter U at gmail.com. One of the things I did want to quickly say, um, you know, also regarding my book is that, you know, um, when I was getting high, I was trying to mask all of that stuff that I was going through. But once I got clean and sober, um, I had to deal with all of that stuff, the, the um, emotions, the isolation, the guilt, the shame, the feeling unworthy. And so some of the things I share in my book, Releasing the Stronghold, is some of the things that I did to empower myself to be the best version of me that I am today. And I encourage you to go out and get the book. And so the mask came off, the covering came off, and now you're free. Yes. And we thank God for that. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, but I do want to thank you for sharing your empowering story with our listeners and our viewers. And I encourage each one to get a copy of that book. It is available on Amazon. And if you're struggling with an addiction, get the help that you need. Save your life. Save someone else's life. You've heard it today on A Place Call Through with those inspirational moments. And again, we want to give you that number, 1-800-662-4345 and 1-800-487-4889. Help is available to you. And if you like this story and other stories that we presented to you on a place called through, please reach out to me. I am Evangelist Patricia Wade Goings, and I don't mind praying with you. Anytime we offer a midnight prayer cry every first and third Friday. And if you visit my website at www. Um, dot willpower, the call to rise above dot org. You'll find that information and the call in number. It's a free number that you can call in. Visit my website, submit those prayer requests. Our intercessors and warriors will be praying and are praying for you. And if you'd like to be my guest, please reach out to me at pgoingwp at gmail.com. And you can reach me on my mobile and area code of 843. And that's 812-1958. Or go to my voicemail and leave me a message in area code of 843-604-9744. Once again, we just want to thank you, Ms. Allen, for sharing your encouraging story. God speak to you. And again, get the help that's needed. Help is available no matter where you live at. If you're in China, wherever, there is help. There's help all over the world for you. So beat those habits. Do like Ms. Allen. Survive, be a conqueror. You don't let it conquer you, you conquer it. Releasing that stronghold is there for you. 
God bless you. We wish you the best. Blessings and love. And we hope to talk to you again real soon. We hope that our listeners and our viewers continue to tune in to us at a place called Through Inspirational Moments, where we do broadcast live from WYTV7 Community Broadcasters Network. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.